I am Jonas from VHDLWiz.com and in this video I will show you how you can use the Wave Audio File Reader and Writer packages to simulate your audio processing VHDL modules. And you can also use this method to simulate different kinds of signal processing VHDL modules because the audio WAV file format can store any kind of waveform. So with a little bit of imagination, you can also make this work for simulating, for example, a radio frequency processing VHDL module. The method is the same. And in this video, I will show you how we can use this package to read the audio WAV files and display them in the MOLSIM waveform viewer. So this is actually my voice being displayed in MOLSIM as an analog signal. And we're going to do that in this video. I will show you how we can read and write WAV files by using this package. And this package is available in the VHDL with shop. So if you want to have it and reproduce my steps after you have seen this video, you can click the link below this video to purchase this package and it is also available in the VHDL with membership as a downloadable. You can also find a link to the VHDL with membership below this video. Okay, so let's proceed. I'm going to show you how we can use the zip file that you can get to produce those results. I am using Windows in this demo, but the run scripts that I provide for Molsim or Questa will work just as good on Linux. As long as you have Questa or Molsim installed on your system, you can follow the steps that I do in this video. And if you're using a different VHDL simulator, you can still run the VHDL code. The VHDL code will work, but you have to create your own run scripts or start the simulation manually. Because the run script that I provide only works on Questa or Molsim. And I have downloaded the zip file here, so I'm going to enter the zip file and inside there's a folder containing the project. So let's copy this folder. I'm hitting Control C on my keyboard and then I'm going to move it to my documents folder because that's where I keep all of my VHDL projects for the membership portal and other projects. And then let's enter this folder. So these are the project files. First we have the wave reader and writer package, a test bench which we're going to run in a few moments a run script for running this project in Molsim and a WAV format file for displaying the signals as analog literals in the Molsim waveform viewer. And then we have a license file, a how to run GIF and two audio samples. And these are recordings that I have created. They are recordings of my voice. The first one or the second one here, audio in stereo. 48 kilohertz, 24 bits PCM. So that's a pulse code modulation file. And I got this straight from the audio recorder that I'm using, the Zoom audio recorder. So this is a 24 bit PCM encoding wave file. And the other one is a mono wave file of 32 bit per channel. And this one has IEEE float encoding. So it's a different type of wave file from the other one. And they will both work with my reader and writer packages because my reader and writer packages don't care about the encoding. It just reads the samples and gives them to the other test bench. So we're going to go ahead and try that out. But first, let's take a look at the user manual because in this zip file, there's a user manual.pdf. And let's open it and have a look inside so we can see how this reader and writer packages work. And when you open the zip file, it's going to look something like this. So let's just scroll down to the interesting part that I'm going to talk about right now. The table of contents shows the method prototypes, and that's where I want to go right now, because they show the prototypes of the procedures and functions that you can access in this wave reader protected type because this wave reader package contains a protected type that you can create an object of in your test bench and then you can call procedures and functions to interact with that and read and write wave files and the first most obvious procedure in the reader is the open file procedure is pretty self-explanatory you supply a file name and the reader will open it and then when you open it, it will parse the header of the WAV file and make it ready for reading. 
find the first data sample. And then we have a close file procedure. You can call this one when you are done with reading this file. And then we have some convenience functions. Is open will return true if you have already opened a file and false if not. Is empty allows you to check if there are more data available in the file for reading. So this function will return true if there are more samples that you can read from this file. And then you can get some information from the header, get audio format, get number of channels, is it mono or stereo, get the sample rate, get the bits per sample, get the total number of samples in this file, and get how many unread samples there are. So if you're reading, you can call this function to check how many samples are there left. And then there's a convenience function here, print meta info. We're going to see this one in action later. It just prints all of this information and some more information from the header of the WAV file to the simulator console. And then the most interesting part, read sample. There are two overloaded versions of this procedure. Read sample that takes one signal is the mono version. And read sample which takes two signals is the stereo version. So when you call read sample after opening the file, this procedure will place the left and right sample on these signals that you supply to this procedure when you call it. And the same with the mono version. And that's the wave reader. So let's go ahead and go to the writer. It seems a bit more complicated at first, but it's really not. So the first thing we see is that open file. If we want to open a file for writing, it takes more than just a file name. It takes all of these parameters as well. Audio format, channels, sample rate, bits per sample, and total number of samples. And that's because these things have to go in the header of the WAV file before we can start writing to it. So it makes sense that we have to provide this information when we open the file, because when we call open file, the writer package will create the header and it has to know this information. Is it stereo? Is it mono? What is the sample rate, the bits per sample, and how many samples are you going to write? Because this has to be in the header before the data. So we have to supply it to this procedure when we call it. And it's not that difficult. I'm going to show you how we can do it very easily in a few moments. And the next procedure, close file, you have to call this after you have written all of the samples. This total number of samples has to be written before you can call close file. Otherwise, the package is going to give a warning. You're going to be able to close the file, but it won't be a correctly written WAV file. And then you have some other functions for convenience. Is open will tell you if this writer object has opened a file for writing and get samples left to write will return the number of samples you have to write before you can close the file. And then the most interesting procedures, write sample and write sample stereo. So you have to call the correct procedure here based on what you put in num channels. So if you put one in number of channels, it means that it's a mono file. And then you have to call the mono version here. Otherwise, you have to call the stereo version. And you have to call the correct procedure, the write sample procedure, the correct number of times. You have to call it total samples number of times, because otherwise it's not going to be a correctly written WAV file. Then finally, you're going to have to close the file. But it is not that difficult, because most of the time, I'm just going to skip to an example use case that I have in this user guide. Most of the time you want to pass audio data through a device and a test. And then you read from one file and then you pass it through the device and a test and then you write it to a second file. And the input and output file usually have the same format and that makes it a lot easier. So this is an example of some process that will pass data through a device and a test. So first we open the reader. So this is an imaginary test bench. There's a real test bench in the zip file, which you can examine. But this test bench imagines that 
we are reading from a WAV file and passing it through the device in the test and writing it back again. You can examine the real testbench.bht file to see a working example and we're going to run it in a few moments. But in this case we are opening one file for reading, then we're just printing some meta info to the simulator console about this file. And then after opening the input WAV file for reading, we use that information to open the output WAV file for writing. So we call on writer open file with a different file name from the read file name, but then we call the get functions in the reader object to get the information that we need for the rest of the parameters. The audio format, the number of channels, the sample rate, the bits per sample, and the total number of samples. Because we just want to create an identical file as we read. It's going to have the same format and the same number of samples, but different audio data, because we're going to stream the audio data through the device in the test, which can be, for example, a filter module or some kind of audio processing module. But in the end, it's going to have the same number of samples and the same format. So this is how we can easily read a WAV file and create an identical output WAV file with different audio data. Simply call the get functions in the reader package with the same names as the required parameters in the open file procedure in the writer. And then when we have opened both the reader and the writer, we go into loop. While the reader is not empty, read one sample, and in this case it's a stereo sample, and then we're going to pretend that stereo in left and stereo in right is connected to some device on the test. And after we write the stereo samples to these signals, which the device on the test can access, we're going to wait for the correct period for the sample rate. So we take one second and divide it by the sample rate, which we can get from the reader because it has parsed the header of the WAV file and it knows the sample rate of this audio file. And if we wait for this amount of time, that's going to be a very long time for an FPGA because in this case we are processing audio samples and it's going to be a couple of thousand of clock cycles. If we are running an FPGA at 100 megahertz, it's going to be enough time for the device and the test to react many times. So we're just going to wait for this time and assume that the device and the test has processed the data. It probably did that very quickly and is idle most of the time. And then after this line, after we have waited to achieve the correct sampling rate, we're going to call write, write samples, and then just write back, stereo out left and stereo out right to this writer object. And finally, after the loop has finished, we're going to call reader close and writer close file to make sure that no data is lost on the written data to the output WAV file. So this is how we can read one file, pass it through the device and test like this, and write it to a different file and then we can listen to it afterwards or analyze it using a third-party software. Okay, so enough talking now, let's go ahead and run this test bench. So I'm going to open Questa, the simulator that I'm using. And right now there is no design loaded, so we're going to load it and the easiest way to do that is to use my quick start script in the zip file that you should have downloaded. And to do that, we type do, and then we go into the folder, which in my case is C colon, and the username, users Jonas, that's my username, slash documents to get into the documents folder, because that's where we placed the project folder. And the project folder's name is wav file underscore rw and the version name. And then slash run dot do. This is how easily you can run this file. Just type do and the path to the run dot do file in the project folder. And it should start the simulation. It should compile the VHDL files and start the simulation. So this is how easy you can run the test bench after you obtain the project files. So now we see it has compiled. Now it compiled 
the reader and the writer and the test bench and we can go ahead and type run tv as it says in the description here run tv to start the simulation and this test bench just passes through the audio data it doesn't do any transformations the only thing it does is to read the input wave file or two of them one mono and one stereo and present them in the waveform viewer and write them back again to different wave files so let's go to the console now and there the test bench has completed it says test bench complete check the waveform we're going to do that check the underscore out wave output files using a media player let's do that too but first let's have a look at the text that got printed to the console so we have some information here which my test bench prints opening the file name for reading and this is the wave file header info it just prints the header info what kind of audio format this one is ieee float it's a mono channel and the sample rate and all of this and the same with the other file this is a stereo file post code modulation and this one has 24 bits sample rate and in the end it closed the output file so it wrote two files somewhere here it says opening file audio out mono for writing closing files and then it did the same with the stereo file it opened it and wrote an output file just passing data through the test bench and to a new WAV file but all done with VHDL so let's go ahead and have a look at the waveform now so this is the waveform in MolSim it's not a waveform in any audio editing software this is just regular VHDL signals displayed as analog literals in MolSim so this is the IEEE 32-bit float mono signal displayed in MolSim as an analog signal and here are the pulse width encoded 24-bit stereo signals and we can see that they look like audio samples and they are this is my voice being displayed in molsim read by vhdl and let's go ahead and see if we can view the output files so here are the output files out mono out stereo so let's go ahead and listen to it for example the mono file vhdl makes me feel good and that's right let's hear it again vhdl makes me feel good Yes, it does make me feel good. Let's try the stereo file. I like FPJs. Yes, let's try that again. I like FPJs. Yes, I like FPJs. I agree with myself. And I think that you can see by now that these packages are useful for simulating audio processing VHDL modules, but they can also be used for simulating different kinds of signal processing like radio frequencies because the wave files just store the waveform and if you read them out quicker they can easily be storing radio frequencies to get started using the packages i recommend viewing the testbench.vhd file and of course the user manual and that concludes my presentation of the wave audio file reader and writer packages this project is available in the VHDLWiz shop and if you're not already watching this video on the product page you can click the link in the video description below the video to get to that page and this zip file is also available as a downloadable in the VHDLWiz membership because as a member of the VHDLWiz membership you get a new resource item or a new course every month so every other month is going to be resource item something like this that you can use in your work and every other month is going to be a course a video course with many lessons about something about vhdl or fpga design and if you're interested in joining this subscription based learning system the vhdl with membership you can also click the link in the video description to learn more about that i hope to see you on the inside